Then we start to talk about the celestial heavens. Actually, it's pretty interesting. I was looking through an Enoch, and it actually shows the biblical text where we end up seeing the description of the heavens coming from one of the prophets. And so in the story, he's taken up from the angels, and he shows what we actually see as a deocentric version of the universe. It was to say that when he's taken up, and this is thousands of years before Copernicus and Galileo, and what we see is that the moon going around the earth, the earth and the moon going around the sun, and the sun going around the throne room of God. It uses it as this giant mountain of sapphire. And ultimately, the angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel, they give a description, and they show him everything, all of the secrets of the universe, how the higher realms of existence enter into this world, and they bring him before the throne room of God. He goes before the case of God, the throne room of God. He ends up actually opening his eyes, and ultimately, the theory of the saying is that this becomes the angel Metatron from the high. And so that there is an ascension process. But the idea is that it actually shows the existence of the heavens in a new way, in a new form. And it opens our eyes into the text and the history that we end up seeing to where thousands of years ago, we already had a preconceived conception of the universe as it's known today. But it goes a step further. And it actually shows us that the throne of God sits within the center of the universe. Well, now we know because of modern physics that at the center of the universe is a giant black hole. But at that, it actually, if we end up looking at it, the right spectrum of light, there's this giant blue light. It almost looks like Christ is at the center of it. It's amazing to see. And to have this already set forth in the text thousands of years ago shows us that there's an ancient knowledge, something deeper, hidden within the scriptures. You know, not only you know, have you ever heard of the book of Joshua? When we open up in Kings, it says it's not written in the book of Joshua. Joshua, literally, the upright. But to look into the text and to realize that there are such secrets, mysteries, hidden within the Word of God gives you a deeper appreciation. Not only that, but also from the heavens. That angelic instruction lies blessing to even realize that it's there. But then furthermore, to have that ascension process, to have the same instruction, the same teaching that's given to Hot, to Daniel, and the Archangels Gabriel, and Michael. You know, the interesting portion of this is that there's a fast. And as he fast for 21 days, he ends up having this angelic revelation. You see the same thing with Paul and with Jesus. Jesus is amazing because before you end up seeing him having the angelic ministry, where he's ministered to from the angels, he's also tempted by Satan. And so it gives us actually a premonition and an understanding that before we end up receiving that divine angelic blessing from the angels, there's a testing from the adversary. But when we cast away, we don't need that stone to be turned to bread. When we stand with all the world before us, and we choose God, we choose Christ, get ready for a blessing. Because at that point, that's when it's ready. That's when it's time for us to receive that age of ministry. That new divine understanding that's given forth to Daniel, from the prophets to David. Paul to Jesus. I want you to receive that. And the way that we start is accepting Christ. If you've never said, if you've never received Jesus, proclaim it. Jesus is the Lord. Receive that and open up the scriptures. It feast on wealth, knowledge, understanding, and blessings. God bless. God bless America. I'll see you.